You remember the last time we met, we talked about equalization, audio frequency, but the most important thing we need to talk about before you start all of this is you need to find out about the bandwidth of your transmitter. Most of the transmitters are not 3K wide. They're only 2,400 wide. Some are 2,100 wide. And there's a great demonstration on the last, uh, the last uh, audio alley. You want to go back and look at uh, program tw uh, 229 and 230, and it will help you very much figure out what you need to do uh, to find out if you, you want to really do any equalization, if it's going to do any good. Because as you heard the demonstration, uh, if you're only 2.1 wide, it doesn't make any difference. You're not going to get much out of it. But the other side of that is if you do use some kind of equalization that's in your radio, you want to make sure that you have equalization in the right spot. Again, if you have a three-band EQ that you're looking at, you're probably not going to hear anything out of that top filter. The 2.5, you're going to get a little bit of it. What's the answer? The answer is parametric EQ. Oh my gosh, this sounds complicated. And you know, it really isn't. Here is why. We have three filters, just like we had uh, prior in the fixed band. But the fixed band, when they design the equalizer, the engineer puts this at 80. They're usually around at 80 or 100. You can't change that. All you can do is change the boost or notch. You can't change where this 2.5 filter is. But with parametric, you are the engineer. And you can move these filters. There's usually three filters. And the bottom filter can be moved. Usually they'll start out around 80 hertz on the low end. And they go uh, up around 700. So you can move this where you need it. The mid can go from like 700 to around usually around 2100, uh, they vary a little bit, but that's okay because you can slide that. You can adjust the frequency and the same thing with the top. And what we do in the, uh, here in amateur radio, uh, I usually set this somewhere around 120 to 150 cycles. I set this one at about 1800 to 2000, and I set this one at about 3200. Now, I have a really nice slope that I can adjust the boost and cut if I need to cut any of them. That really works. You can change that and make it work really good. And uh, that, that's something that, that you, you become the engineer. You're the guy. You're the guy. And um, here's what that looks like. Here's an equalizer. This is um, a parametric uh, a little... Uh, studio guy, but they all have this same kind of look where you have, there, there's three filters and they're laying like so, okay? And you can adjust, as you see, the frequency. You can adjust the plus or minus. And this gives you some really good adjustments of these three filters. And you can have you have one, you have two, and you have three, just as you saw over there. You can adjust them for whatever you need as far as frequency and, of course, boost and cut. Parametric is not difficult. You have to listen to yourself in another receiver. That is so, so important. And it's something that a lot of guys get kind of shook up. No, I'm not going to be able to do this. Well, yes, you can. And uh, what, what really works, and I find this really, really good in amateur radio. We all here on Ham Nation, all of the hosts, we have the Elise's mixer. And there's a lot of mixers out there like this. But you will notice uh, 
this has one channel and actually there's two. It just has highs and lows. But the highs at 12K and this baby's at 50. Well, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I going to do with 80, 80 hertz on the bottom end and 12K? Well, they have a three band. But again, that's like I said a while ago. It's at 80, 2.5, 12K. However, this third channel has parametric in the mids. This is great. The low is at 80. That's perfect. We can boost it. We can cut it. But the mid channel it is parametric and we can change the frequencies and get that where you need it. I usually set that at about 22, 2500. And now we can boost or notch that at 2500. The tops at 12K, I'm not going to, it's not going to do much. But with that parametric, you can change it, move it around where you need. That's really important. The other thing that a lot of guys are trying to do is they're, they're trying to put mixers and things on radios that sometimes you really don't need them because a lot of the trans transmitters today have equalizers in them. So you don't need an outboard. And with the right microphone, you can really make things sound beautiful without any outboard things. But if you do have a, a, a radio that doesn't have any connector in the back, what do you do now? It really gets a little tough. Well, you can take it into the mic preamp, you know, in the front end. But you're going to be driving that very sensitive input with about a volt and a half. And we showed you last time I was here about the T-pad. Well, I have a little better drawing here for you. And the, the situation is you can then take this chart that I'm going to show. You might want to do a screen save on this thing when we get this all ready to go here. You want to take advantage of the screen save. This is the, the T-pad. You take the output of the mixer. It's going to be about a volt, volt and a half. And you're going to go into this very sensitive millivolt input. So it's what microphone develops. So you'll overdrive the heck out of it if you try plugging your mixer output into it. So you do a T-pad. And here's how you do it. This is a chart of how to make a T-pad. And there are all of the frequencies. And uh, get that set so you can get all of them. I usually build a little box, put a connector on each end. You, uh, you can just very easily, the uh, one resistor, second resistor, the third one down to ground. That works great because now you have the ability to use that just about anywhere you want. And that works great. However, if you really want to do this right, you need to take advantage of the accessory plug in the back. And if you, uh, if you paid attention when you got your radio, there was a little bag and it had a whole bunch of these things. Now, ICOM really helps us because ICOM has wires, so you don't have to solder them. That's kind of neat. Thank you very much. Mr. Anyway, that was cool. And uh, then you can just pick out the colored wires. They tell you what pins they are. Look on your, uh, back in your manual. Yes, you're going to have to open your operations manual. <laughs> Look back there and you'll have it made. Now, on other radios, what do you do? You have these little things that come in a bag. Oh, my gracious. And I hear from so many, oh, I can't sign. I can't sign. Yes, you can. And where most people get to get off base real quick is the fact that it, they're hard to get apart. So they can't even figure out how to get them apart. So they forget it. Well, we're going to go through this. George, I'm going to do some soldering. Now, you're going to probably grade me on this. It's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> but I think we'll get, the, we'll, get the, <laughs> we'll get the idea here. First of all, 
you have to do one thing. When you have these plugs, there's kind of a little secret deal or you'll never get it apart. There's a little, little thing here. It's a little tip. You got to dig it out of there. Then you can pull it apart. That little rubber tip fits down into that little notch. See that little notch right there? And if you don't pull that little piece of rubber back, you'll never get it out of there. And I know a lot of guys say, I can't get it apart because they haven't done the little secret thingy. You can see it here. See that little notch thingy? You want to pick that out of there with your thumbnail or screw this. It'll, it'll bend out. Now, okay, we have it apart. The first thing you got to do here, don't forget it. You're going to have to have your wire ready. You see this little thing you just took off? Don't lay it down on the bench. Don't even take it out of your hands. What do you want to do with it? You want to put it on the wire. Because <laughs> you're going to put it together and you're going to say, uh-oh, I forgot this. So put it on there right now. And I prep my wire. You want to get it all prepped. And uh, I also tin it so it's going to solder real easy. And you're not going to use number 12 wire. It's going to have to be pretty small because these pens are pretty small. Now you're ready to do this. And it's very simple. All of you can do this, trust me. Now, you're not going to use a great big soldering iron for this. You're going to use one of the little guys. So what we're going to do here is take that, ca that cable that we prepared, get this all set up so we can see it a little better. You've got to make sure that you have tinned the wire. That's very important. I did that ahead of time. And in this case, uh, it, for what radio I'm using, we're using this pin and that pin, the two outside ones. The first thing you want to do here, and here again, pay attention. You want to tend those pins. Go in and put a little solder on those babies and uh, get them all heated up. Here we go. And once you do that, okay. You want to hold that baby on there till that solder flows down inside there. Don't just touch it. You want to make sure it flows. Then, when we take this pretend wire that we did and we put it down inside there, bingo. But, wait a minute, Heil. You sure you want to do that? Yeah, I do. But there's one other thing that you should do with both of these, and that is this, let me take it back off and show you the mistake I made, because I don't want you to make this. That's why I made the mistake. It's called heat shrink. And you want to put that heat shrink on these. And now we can solder that little booger and it'll drop right in. Hold it on there a little bit, bingo. And uh, I didn't cut a piece of hit for the other one, but you will want to do it to the other one. Solder it in here, we put that little baby in there, hold it on there, make sure the solder flows. Now we're ready to go. And you guys and gals can do this. It's not that difficult, but you need a little vice. You can't just flop it around on the table. You got to do that. And the other thing that has to happen is you have to make sure you put heat shrink on that. And I, I did that purposely that I didn't do that. I wanted you to make sure you saw that. Then after the, uh, uh, the heat shrinks on there, why well, you want to shrink it down. And uh, that's very easily done. If you have never worked with heat shrink, that's a magic thing. And all you do is just hold the soldering iron on that little baby, and it will shrink that right up around that pin, and it won't short out as you put it together. Very simple. Now, remember, we thought to do all of this. Then you have the rest of the connector, and you put that around the front end of it, and you put it all together, and you're ready to go. These little pieces, there's a notch for those. See those notches? You want to make sure that those notches go in the right space, and you're there. And now you're ready to plug this into your transmitter in the back, and then your mixer will plug in to the line input. Put it all back together and you're rocking and rolling. 
And this is the way to do this. This is the only way to do it. Because when you get finished with it, you'll be able to go to the line input. You'll be able to make it happen and happen very well because you won't overdrive the front end. 